Hey, good afternoon to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and Discussion, the evening version now, as I want to talk very quickly about the latest on Hurricane Barrel and now recently designated Tropical Depression number 3 off the North Carolina coast here. So let's get right to it. I want to keep this fairly short just to kind of give you a summary of what's happening. Here's TD number 3. Here is Barrel. So let's take a look at the one that has the most pressing issue right now, and that is Barrel. Top winds are still 80 miles per hour, but now we have a hurricane watch that has been posted for portions of the Lesser Antilles. So let's just zoom this in a little bit so we can kind of look at this together. Uh, still very small, so they refer to it as miniature barrel, and it is moving west, due west now, at 15 miles per hour. Pressure is 994 millibars, a fairly high pressure for that kind of a wind speed, but it is the atmosphere and the way it's behaving and the compact nature of this hurricane that is quite remarkable and as such the pressure is a little bit higher than we would normally see but that really doesn't matter much because impacts are coming for portions of the Lesser Antilles. Uh, as such the government of Barbados has issued a hurricane watch for Dominica and the government of France, of France has issued a tropical storm watch for Martinique, Guadeloupe, St. Martin, and St. Bartolome. Tropical storm watch for St. Bart. Uh, they were impacted by Irma last year and then Jose to some extent. So the summary of watches and uh, warnings in effect, hurricane watch for Dominica, tropical storm watch for Martinique, Guadeloupe, St. Martin, and St. Bartolome. All right, so over the next couple of days, it's possible that hurricane conditions could impact these areas. So let's go back and look at the track map for Barrel real quick, and you'll see that over the next couple of days, as we zoom in here, uh, it is expected to pass right through the heart here of the uh, Lesser Antilles. All right, so the small size of it means that it won't be a big impact event. So that's good. Um, that being said, it's still possible that we could see hurricane conditions certainly tropical storm conditions for parts of these areas and of course on the heels of last season this is the last thing you want to see so please take this seriously I'm sure people down there are hyper aware and are taking it seriously and uh, that's good to, to you know, hope for but hope alone is not a planning tool you have to take action so get the word out to people down here that this is coming especially in areas where communications may still be a little spotty I want to make sure people know Beyond the impacts here to the islands of the Lesser Antilles, Barrel is expected to pass to the south of Puerto Rico, and because of its fairly small size, and maybe I should say very small size, probably minimal rain or anything like that for the island of Puerto Rico, and then maybe passing just south of the Dominican Republic and Haiti. We'll just have to see about that. And then beyond this time frame, what happens over here? Let's just wait and see. There's plenty of speculation that we could do, but that's not helpful in the least. Looking at the next system here, this is Tropical Depression number three, and that's off the North Carolina coast. Before I do that, I wanted to show you real quick what the loop of barrel is uh, like right now. Uh, very small system, so it's hard to get a sense of scale here, but we're only talking about a few tens of miles across overall of the entire system with the worst of the weather literally only being maybe 10 to 20 miles across north, south, east, and west. Very, very small and compact system. Not as well organized now as it was earlier, but this can change. We can see quick up, uh, up and down changes with this system, rapid increases or decreases in intensity as barrel moves along. All right, so let's go back to the Hurricane Center's homepage. I want to take a look now at TD number three off the North Carolina coast. And with this system, the pressure also fairly high, 10, 16 millibars, winds are 30 miles per hour, still in the formative stages, disorganized, uh, and it's forecast, two things that I want to point out with this, to move away from the North Carolina coast, generally over the next few days, like this, and as you see there, that H, we'll zoom in on that, it's also forecast to become a hurricane. And so that would be two hurricanes in the early part of July, Barrel the first, this one, and if it, when it gets named, it'll be called Chris, by the way. Uh, that's two hurricanes in the month of July, fairly unusual to have that. 
this forming in subtropics up here, beryl forming down in the deep tropics. So we'll have to see if that means anything later on, uh, the presence of beryl. Kind of early for that to be happening with a Cape Verde system. In terms of impacts here, so this is a front that's coming down. You can clearly see that. This will come down, stall, and then lift out, leaving barrel behind. And then it's a matter of how far west does this get before it loops and heads out. Some of the models do bring it fairly close to the North Carolina coast over here, the Outer Banks especially. Others are more just kind of meandering, and then out it goes. So we're going to have to just wait and see. These meandering type systems are very difficult to forecast. So my main concern will be for rip currents occurring along the coast here as this starts to ramp up and kick up the seas and sending some swells out towards the land and the beaches. And any swimmers heading out, especially young children and teenagers, right? Anybody who's got that sort of I'm tougher than nature approach to things. No, 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 no. You don't want to mess with these rip currents. Please check in with the local beach officials. I'm very serious about this ignoring the hazards and saying, you know, this is just a depression, man. Don't get so upset about it. Well, I would be upset if someone lost their life because they didn't know that there were rip currents as a direct result of uh, this system being out there, TD number three, expected to become Tropical Storm Chris. So please take that seriously, uh, that this is out there. If you're heading to the beaches of the Carolinas, just pay attention to those rip current possibilities. Check with weather.gov weather.gov, put your zip code in of where you're going, see if there are any watches or warnings related to rip currents or beach hazards, and more importantly, if you just really need to know, ask a local beach official, lifeguards, beach patrol, uh, if you see a police officer, honestly, you know, don't laugh, this is very serious. Two people were killed last year by Hurricane Gert, which was well offshore of the East Coast, but the rip currents, because of the large swells, took the lives of two people and this can be totally prevented if people are just aware. All right, so that's it for me for now. Hopefully a short enough update for you that you got the gist of everything. Watching Barrel, watching TD number three very closely, and I'll be on top of this over the weekend. You can follow me on Twitter right there, at Hurricane Track, and I will be posting snippets here and there, and then full updates here on social media, on the website, on our Patreon site. It's all over the place, so you can be informed. Have a great and safe weekend. I'm Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks for tuning in. I'll have continuing updates for you throughout the weekend.